Look at that. Look at your bite. There you go. Quick bigger. This one here. Oh yeah, you're on. You've got something good, mate. Yeah, this is uh, on the soft bait. First soft baiting. Nice. How's that feel? Good, mate. Really yeah. good. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Oh, that's Whoa, a good one. You got hey guys. So on this uh, fishing trip, I'm going out on Ray's jet ski and the main focus is to give Ray a introduction to soft baiting uh, and yeah I think he's quite successful I sort of showed him you know the basics of how to uh, drag the soft bait behind the ski what sort of drift to set up what weights to use uh, and when to strike etc and yeah had a pretty successful trip uh, Ray caught one legal snapper it was really good size and lots of undersized and I caught three legal snapper in the two hours that we were out fishing just a quick look at what we used so for Ray he started off on this pink soft bait early in the morning this is the catch black label liveys and then I started off on the orange here and uh, both colors were getting heaps of bites and then I changed to the black ninja color I also went up a bit heavier in weight I went from the quarter ounce up to the three eighth ounce and Ray started on the half ounce and then moved to the 3 8 ounce because we were fishing in around 10 meters of water and yeah I was using my Ocean's Legacy Cloud 9 soft bait rod P1 paired with a Daiwa Luvius so yeah kind of wanted to do it as a sort of tutorial style for Ray and yeah if you've got any questions please ask in the comments below and yeah if you enjoy the video and enjoy my content uh, please click the subscribe button thanks guys enjoy the video so you always put the secret sauce down in this part here, eh? Uh, I do it on the outside now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, it's uh, just a little less messy. Now, I normally um, rig the lure before I do the sauce and oh, it's less yeah. messy. <laughs> Stop getting it all over your hands. Yeah. <coughs> Have a feel of the drag, because this is probably the drag that I would fish for in soft baiting. So I reckon our plan here is we'll cast your one out that way yeah like not 45 degree angle like maybe further out back i'll do the other way and the idea is because we're drifting towards the north of the channel yeah the lure basically just stays on the bottom and it's just <coughs> sort of just moving well, along as we drift down, okay. yeah and then it's sort of every time it hits the bottom a puff of the mud comes yeah. up and that's what the fish is feeding on and um, I typically try to have a good distance rather than having a too vertical down yeah because I find with soft baiting like you kind of feel the bite better if it's further out yeah so casting in front of a drift for soft baiting is probably um, what people say is the right way to soft bait yeah because with soft bait what you're trying to do is select the weight so that it sinks down as slow as possible yeah. and then the fish Come and bite it as it's sinking down. I find with that, like obviously, it works for a lot of people. Well, I haven't had a lot of success with that. Nah, see, my pref I find with casting forward is you're casting a lot, so a lot of times your line is out of the water. So, in the way, you're lowering your chance of catching fish because your line's out of the water. But it depends on where you fish as well, you know, like there are certain zones that where it's really rocky and you want to only be fishing as the thing drops. And once it drops, you're, you're you're working to actively pull it back up. But in the you know over sand through Rangi Channel where we're fishing now, we do get snagged, but we don't get snagged that much. Just as long as we don't you know leave it on the bottom too long, actively fish it. I find you know like if we're dragging the soft paint as our ski drifts through the channel, it's just staying at the bottom, which is where the fish is. Like they're just swimming around feeding eating shells, crabs, starfish, shrimps, you know. Well there you go, you got a fish on. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, a yellowtail. Jack mackerel. <laughs> Interesting. So I put a bit of bait out here I guess. So yeah I think like so we're now in what eight meters of water. So I'll start with this 10 gram I think, 3 8 ounce, well, this might be a quarter ounce, just go nice and light. So yeah clips, clips are nice for soft baiting, like that's my preference. Um, 
and with the clips it just allows us to just change the jig head, change the weight quite easily without having to retie knots and be a bit more lazy. Bit of secret sauce, extra scent. Yeah, I think if you put it on the inside, it gives it the longest chance to dissipate out. But um, I just do the outside now, because then it's less washing up later on. Yeah. Because it's it's so sticky, and it's uh, yeah. Rather than having the inside <laughs> get too uh, get too dirty. It hits the bottom quite easily because our drift is quite slow and you'd want to be you know based on the depth and the speed fishing your lightest jig head possible for, for it to um for that condition because in that way the lure it's its most natural it's just you know touching the bottom bouncing up and down and yeah once in a while you know give it a wiggle like you have like i'm actually pretty still most of the time i might only give it a wiggle every 15 seconds and it's just you know just a quick pull it up and then it's going to sink back down and yeah it's real cool when the when the fish take it because your rod's almost pointing straight at it like you don't want it straight at it you want it to be able to have a bit of a bend the fish they they tend to like inhale the soft bait from the side and that's why that hook sets on it really well oh yeah, I'm getting a bite Ooh, another good bite. And yeah, I find that yeah, they're not scared to come back. Like they don't get scared away if you strike. You can obviously like decide if it's the bite too small, you just leave it. And if it's a good bite, then you can uh, you can strike it. And it's fun because it's like really active fishing. Okay. Right, that's a good bite. There you go. I don't think it's a keeper, but maybe like 25 centimeters. You sure? Oh, I'll measure it. Looks a bit small. It's on the uh, the grippers are just on the back here as well. Actually, you better put them in here. Grippers? Oh, no, there's lip grippers here. Oh, great. <laughs> Very handy. That, like pretty well hooked. Oh. Yeah, there you go, fish on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice work. This one is 32. Yeah, it's just like important to remember to try have it like this is how mine looks. Just have it presented as best you can, you know, through the middle. Is that all right? Like yeah, I'd say that's probably a bit wonky. It could go a little bit further back. If you let out some slack, I'll, I'll show you. They're, um, they're a bit harder to thread because of that reverse yeah, hook, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just take that back out. And then you can sort of see this is sort of the point you want it to go through. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to go a little bit further back. Not yep. quite, yeah, slightly better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just want it to look as natural as possible. Yeah, so like early morning, I find that pink one that you use, also the white one, is quite good because it's like absorbs a little bit of the light. You can even use like the light from your fish finder oh, to, okay. to put a bit of light in it because it's got that glow. And then underwater, it just makes it a bit more visible. And then as the sun comes up, you can move to like, oh, there you go, fish on. Most of the more natural colours, like clear water, use natural colours. Ones that look like fish, yeah. like a pilchard or a jack mac. On a, like murky days, you know, like overcast or murky water, I use bright colours. Use like orange, the orange. bright orange, yeah. Nuclear chicken, yeah. use black maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to give you a cast weed? Yeah. Give you a bit more yeah. distance. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, it's pretty like active fishing. 
with the soft baiting yeah. you're just focusing on one thing but you know like sometimes I come out and I do two rods and I might soft bait one and just have one in the rod holder but the most fun I have in this area is just focus on soft baiting and that's it oh there's a bite but yeah it's amazing that the fish like soft baits yeah. <laughs> going through here like they just they just keep coming and nibbling at it gee um grant um from catch fishing has recorded a couple of videos uh, around rangi channel uh, or rangi toto maybe a bit further out by the worm beds and he just shows the the action of the soft bait at the bottom of the sea oh yeah you know quite good interesting to see yeah so i i'll, I'll send you I'll send you a couple of links to those videos. They're really cool. And then in, in, in one of them, you see a snapper swimming past to investigate it. So, you know, obviously that, that soft bait looks really appealing to them. Oh, there's a bite. So it works just as good when you're a bit deeper, like 15 to 20 meters? Well, you have to go with a heavier weight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, like, for me, up to 15 meters, I'm pretty happy with soft bait. But I think once it gets deeper, I'd rather move to a jig. And yeah, I think it's important to be able to feel the bite. So that's why I find casting it out and having that angle is so important it's just easier to feel when you know you've got that angle in the line yeah quite the opposite of like a micro jig or a kabura where you want to be straight up and down yeah. i find soft baiting you want as much angle as possible so sometimes i just keep letting line out and then you know then it will go back a little bit and i'll get a bit more angle do you put more um secret sauce on again now or leave it for a few cars? Yeah, put, put, it, put some more on. Like the sauce just acts as a burly. You know, like you don't don't need it. Like once the fish is close enough, they'll go for the lure, but it's bringing them closer to your lure. The lures are designed to work without secret sauce. But this just uh, gives you a bit more edge. Get, get a bit more action. <laughs> yeah. Mangled. <laughs> Yank a couple of times. Yeah, it? yeah. So you gotta, you gotta I'm check it regularly. Well, actually. Also, if I like the good thing. Oh, oh, that's a big bite. Good thing about this style of soft baiting is you're just covering a lot of ground. Yeah. So you actually don't need to be changing spots too much because you're literally just changing spots the whole time yeah. as you drift along. If you find like a certain line that you drift, you catch a few fish. Oh, that's a good good fish. That's your strongest fish today, isn't it? I think so. I think it's a decent bite. Just turn around a bit. I need the net for this one. Oh, 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 come on. Ah, it didn't take it. Oh, there's a little bit more fight right now. Oh, you've got something facing there, by the way. Put it in there. Oh. Same, similar to yours. Very strong. You don't want the meat? Nah, I won't. Oh, I don't want to keep getting Oh, that's a good bite. Yeah. So yeah, you don't need to be this active. Like probably, um, yeah, slow it down a little bit. Well, I know a lot of times you get the hook up when you're like jiggling it up and down, but that in a way could scare the fish away. Oh, okay. So like, you see, I'm pretty much fishing quite still most of the time, but I might give it like one pull every 10 seconds. Oh, because so I think jiggling it there, more there you like go, there there you go. Do that. Do that. Like that, that, yeah, no, it's not still not legal, but that was sort of just gave it a bit of action and then it just dropped back down. It wasn't consistently yeah. moving it because it, it might look a bit unnatural if you're always jiggling it. All right, so this is probably your maybe your fifth snapper. He yeah, wasn't really counting, but yeah, and running again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Bit bigger, this one here. Oh yeah, you're on. You've got something good, mate. Yeah, this is a. This will be a 35. Oh, we can land this one. This is gonna be your dinner. <laughs> That's a decent size snap for that one, isn't yeah. it? At least 350, maybe yeah. bigger. Nice. Thanks for that. Nice, David. Yeah, you're good. the champion, man. Good snapper. <laughs> there you go. 30, 350, easy. 
This is um, 390 actually. I do have this one here as well, with the lighter jig head you gave me. Yeah, uh, I reckon go to this light. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, these are the same. Yeah, maybe use this one. I'll just make sure it's... Yeah, that's rigged pretty well. <coughs> it was mighty fit. <laughs> yeah. The inexpert. Yeah, so this will be, yeah, 3 8 ounce. Yeah. Whereas before, what you were using up here, it's probably just over half ounce. All right, so we'll retire this one, which is the pink on the uh, free X. Bit heavy for where we are. Let's swap over to a free eighth ounce or 10 grams. This is with the Tom Tom color. I caught a good amount of fish on this color last time. You okay to go the other way? Uh, no, nah, I'll spin us around. So yeah, if you're ever on a ski and you're facing the wrong way, you don't want to turn the ski on, you can use the net to spin your way around. Jet ski life hacks. There we go. <laughs> Just need to stop it before it goes all, goes a 360. Perfect. This is the new style catch your kid. And it's called the, called the Harrier. This one here. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's got the traditional grip for the soft bait. So I'll try it. What colour should I try? What do you reckon, Ray? We've got we've got poachers, a squid look alike, the green and yellow, like a lime tiger, we've got black, we've got orange glow, a bruised banana. I reckon they all work though. What do you reckon I should try out? Pooch What's it. your vote? The Jack Mackerel? Yeah. Yeah, Jack Mackerel invitation, because you caught a Jack Mackerel this morning. <laughs> Match the hatch. And these ones are a lot easier to thread in. So yeah, just all you do is just push it through. It comes all the way through, and then you get good at this quite easily. Like after a few tries, it's, it's just it becomes a real natural, and then spin it back around. That's it. Yep. Well presented softly. Bounce is a little less now, eh? Because you're using yeah. a slightly lighter one. Yeah. You know, I think, like, hopefully that leads to you catching more fish because it's, it's got, a, it, you know, becomes a bit more natural because it's not super heavy. I think it's important to get that right balance and weight. Just heavy enough. Yeah, one. Well, yeah. Well, I think I'll get onto a bit better filming angle. <laughs> Soft bait success is good. Yeah, first trip, you're giving it a good go. Catching fish. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. We don't lose it. Hey, right, it's a good one. Good weight. Nice work. Ray's good keeper. That's probably 360 on the soft bait. First soft baiting. Nice. How's that feel? Good mate. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Easy fishing. Yeah. No messing around with bait. Alright, trying it. Black Ninja. Oh, you can see the reef just over there. Hey. Yeah. That's looking decent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's taking yeah. a little bit of light. Yeah. It's nodding a bit too much. <laughs> Black. By the time you pay for delivery, otherwise it's not really... Also very really important that you like build confidence in the technique you're using and the lure you're using. Now you know whatever you're using right now works. Yeah. As long as the fish are kind of hungry, yeah, you're going to yeah, catch yeah. it. You're not doing anything wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a bite. Yeah, any other questions about soft baiting? Or? Kind of uh, cover it all off, eh? Hey? If I talk about the gear used, different, different levels of sensitivity in the rods. This one's P1. Yeah. And PE1 is talking about the thickness of the braid that it supports. And PE1 is pretty light. Like I would say for a soft bait rod, this is a tad too light. Whereas PE1.5, which is maybe like a 3 to 6 kg rod, will be a bit more suited. I think that's sort of like the sweet spot. Your one's probably the next one up, which is PE2. The good thing with that is you can soft bait with it. Like you're not as sensitive as this, but you can micro jig with it as well. And you can cast that micro jig. Yeah. 
and the reel that you have it's got 20 pound braid so you're pretty confident in um, that line well like through Rangi channel here I think like 15 pound line which is that one on a reel that's got maybe 7 to 9 kg drag nice and light like around 200 gram then it just means you can soft bake all day because it just just feels yeah. nice and light about seven foot in length um, the fluorocarbon is 15 pound as well you probably don't want it thicker than that like yours might have 20 pound on it from when I remember tying that but yeah once again yours does micro jigs no problem as well so it just means you need to probably use one size jig head heavier than mine yeah just to counterbalance that lack of sensitivity but you know it seems like it's catching fish fine and you got that 380 snapper and you, you sort of felt the bite and all that and <laughs> striked it oh ah, that was good fish Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Oh, that's Whoa, good you got something decent. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yes. Well done, man. Fish of the day coming yeah. up. Might be that 500. Yeah, could be. Wow. Oh. Awesome. Did you even have to strike it? No, I just slowed it up. The fish is slowly, that one. Yeah, it's over 400, isn't it? Yep. Look at that. Another oh, one on soft bait. I know. Distracted you. Look at that. <laughs> Interesting way to hook a fish. Yeah, it's right through the top of the above the left, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Cool. All good. Got your keys? Yep. 